All right, this is called the New American Home. And it is the kind of show home that is talking about a lot of the cool products that are out lately and it's got all the whatever bells and whistles. Couple things, just as the start of this video. Number one, the line is an hour and a half long. They drove us 45 minutes to get out here and then told us when we got off the bus, you have to wait an hour and a half in line even to get into the house, then the, the tour is 45 minutes. So not gonna do that. Uh, we're gonna continue this conversation with the photos and the floor plan and all that stuff that we can see online. Uh, another thing is that uh, I just have to get off my chest that I do not worship rich people. I think that conspicuous consumption is a little bit uh, gross. And I think that the divide between rich and poor in this country is potentially the central problem that we've got. We're gonna talk about science at this point, but um, I think that there are some things that obviously they're doing good in here, and I'm gonna talk about those using just the information that we can find online since I'm not allowed to get into the house. I will also say that there are definitely some things that we're missing because like most homes that are show homes, that are showcases of all the best builder stuff, and this is the National Association of Home Builders, who historically, and even right now, is fighting against a lot of high performance things and healthy home things because they kind of try to make all of their members happy. Some of them like to do old style building and they don't wanna to have to do new codes and all the whatever. So like, I'm not really a big fan of National Association of Home Builders. I think that they're on the wrong side of the argument a lot of the time. Like I said, some good things, some things that are probably problematic that I'll point out. Here we go. All right, I don't want to bore anybody, so I'm going to try to blast through this as fast as possible. Here is the final performance report for this home that they've built as the show home. Um, now, first of all, thermal envelope, they're going to get to this. I just want to point out that this is the most inefficient way to build a home. Single story means the most amount of surface area per volume of interior space. So if you're going to try and build more efficient, try and stack floors on top of each other. Also bump ups and like bump outs and all this stuff just increases your sur surface area again and number of corners. They are paying attention to the western facing windows and they're adding extra low E coating which lowers the SHGC solar heat gain co coefficient. That's good. Uh, they're talking about an unvented and air sealed attic. They don't say conditioned um, which is my preferred way of talking about it and of doing it, but that's not a, it's not a right way, wrong way. Some people don't like to say it's a conditioned attic. They like to assume that it's gonna be a certain amount of degrees north. They're talking about overhangs, that's good. Uh, always do overhangs. If you don't do overhangs, you're asking for trouble. They have used aero barrier, which is like fix a flat for a building envelope. With that, they achieved a blow order test of 0.35 ACH50. That's very impressive. That's better than my blow order test on my house. We're going to talk about what that means in a few minutes. As far as HVAC goes, they have uh, variable speed equipment, which is uh, like not even 18 sear. And by the way, that's don't poo-poo that. That's good. That means probably that it does a little bit better with dehumidification, which do we need it in Las Vegas? Maybe not. But... Um, but low sear doesn't mean bad. It just means that like they're not cheating the sear to try and uh, to get points. Mechanical ventilation provided by Bro Newtone's AI series. That is some of the best equipment going for home ventilation. We'll we'll look more into this in a minute. Space conditioning system, totally inside the condition space. That is the first thing that you can do to make your HVAC system more high performance. So good job on that. Um, they're touting here the fact that it's going to get a projected HERS index before solar of 54. After solar, it's like negative 45. Don't pay attention to that number too much because that's just throwing money at solar panels. 54 is a respectable HERS index. It's not like incredible, but it's it's doing a good job. Um, and then we've got MERV 13 uh, filtration. That's good. That's above what code is going to require. Code will require MERV 11 at the very get-go. This is like pretty good for human health. HVAC decks are sealed during construction so that you don't get dust in them. That's awesome. Everybody should be doing that. That's like no brainer. Um, correct amount of fresh air coming into the home with the ventilation system. We're gonna also look at that uh, in a minute here. Here is the plan for the house. Now down here, past this garage, there is this little casita. We'll, we might touch on that, but I'm not gonna count it as part of the house. So we're talking just the main living body of the house. We get 72, 73 uh, square feet of living space in the house. 7,000 square feet, four bedrooms. It's a little like mm, disproportionate, but you know, 
to, to, with all due respect, SunWest, the company that's building this and designed it, uh, is building wealthy homes for wealthy people in a wealthy neighborhood. My, I had an idea that like, oh, why don't we have, you know, since this is a show home for the builder show, let's have Scott True build like an affordable home that's high performance right next to it. And of course, nobody's going to let them do that because this is a wealthy neighborhood. And as soon as they're done busing people in here for the show, they're going to turn around and turn this into a gated community and they're going to sell this house for a ton of money. So good for them. Rich clients are nice clients to have. But uh, one thing to point out is that this is the west facing. And you can see all these windows. Oh, no, on the west face of this. That's going to really kill the HVAC uh, loads in the uh, summertime at 5 o'clock in the afternoon. But look at this. Like, that is why you face your windows west is because this is the view. Um, obviously beautiful and spectacular and stunning and all that stuff. It also felt a little bit like looking down on the plebes in the valley, um, but we, we won't do, get too philosophical here. So we've got all these, like, I'm going to try and avoid all the sponsors um, as we go, but we could see that we've got lots and lots of glass on the backside, which is what we were looking at. I'm trying to go over here if I can avoid the, this is like playing Frogger. All right, uh, I want to look at this. So outdoor kitchen, awesome. This, totally awesome. Outdoor kitchens should also have exhaust hoods. Exhaust hood, kitchen exhaust hood is the most important thing you can do for your family's health. Also, if you want to keep this from being all greasy, then this is totally necessary. So that's great. Have your pizza kitchen, have your grill, have them outside the house. That's the best place for them. You turn right around and you've got the indoor kitchen. So we'll come over here and check this out. Um, this is a good setup. They have two islands in this kitchen. Right, one, two, and I'm glad that they didn't put the cooktop on either one of those things. This is the right place for it because we're limiting the geometry of what's going on. It can only take air from the front, and we're also limiting the geometry on the sides with these cabinets, so that's really good. Now, this cooktop right here is a what looks like an eight burner. I looked this up, and it's this thing uh, from Signature. So what you want to do if you're going to size your kitchen exhaust is you want to count up the number of burners, and you get to count all of the BTUs. When you add all these up, you got 15, 15, 23, 23. These are in thousands of BTUs. Plus, we got these 2,000 BTU induction units that are each uh, 2,000 on, on each side. So we've got a total of about, uh, when you, you take the wattage and you multiply by 3.41, and it gives you the BTUs. So we've got a total of about 100,000 BTUs of cooktop power. Now, the way you size this normally, nominally, is you're going to take... Uh, for each 10,000 BTUs, you're going to add 100 CFM of cooktop exhaust. That would give us 1,000 CFM um, uh, exhaust hood. But when we look at this thing, again, uh, this is this right here, which is what actually Signature recommends to put with it. And this thing only blows 650 CFM. So that is a little bit dangerous to not give whoever you're going to sell this house to the power to completely exhaust all of the whatever you're going to do. This is kind of assuming that you're not going to use all eight of the burners at the same time. I don't like to assume stuff like that. So so first of all, this is undersized by about 350 CFM. But let's just consider that if we wanted to do this, we want to size the makeup air. We can use break, Brone's makeup air uh, damper specifier. We put in all the stuff, blah, blah, blah. You guys, if you haven't seen me do this on the channel, I'm hopefully linking a, uh, a video right now. You can also look up Makeup Air on my channel and you'll, you'll find multiple videos about it. So if we've got a 650 or 660 in this case, uh, CFM exhaust hood in the kitchen, and we want to limit the depressurization in the house of this size with this blower door test, then we have to have, if we're just going to poke holes in the side of the house and have mechanical dampers open up and allow the pressure to be relieved, we're going to need seven eight inch dampers to outside and one six. Or we can have four 10 inch damper ducts and one eight. This is a wealthy house in a wealthy neighborhood for wealthy people. There is no chance that they did that uh, to this house. So I think the fact that they weren't bragging about the makeup era, the kitchen exhaust in that performance report, and the fact that the, if, <laughs> if they had bragged about the active makeup era, which is what they would have to do to actually do this right, uh, I don't think they've got makeup air in here. So let's look at um, some of the implications here. Uh, first of all, let's go through the plan. So we've got uh, right here, 
we have the mechanical systems. Now let's go down here and I've just circled some like basic stuff. First of all, I love ceiling fans. Great job because in a higher performance home, even though this one is single story, it's got what looks like code insulation in the uh, roof cavity. It's, a, it's gonna be like, you're doing better if you get that air tightness in there. So ceiling fans are good because you're gonna lower the load. HVC system is gonna be smaller. We have a bath exhaust fan and it's over the toilet in this bathroom. There's a shower right down here that it should be actually in. And in fact, if you would put this thing in the shower, the air comes in under the door and goes across the bathroom and hopefully would grab the odors around the toilet on its way out over the shower. So that could be a two for one. When builders call this a fart fan, they end up thinking that that is what it's for is farts. So that's not very healthy. So moving up, we have a powder room with a fart fan. And in this case, yeah, there's not a shower in here. That's what it's for. You put it over the toilet. That's fine. Laundry room, they've also exhausted. I think that's good. I always ask my clients, do you have any need or desire to exhaust out of your laundry room? Uh, here in this bathroom, we don't see a bathroom exhaust location anywhere on here. And that's, I think, just a typo. I think they just forgot it because if you move over here to this bathroom, which is basically the same layout. They have put one in. Again, right, right, they put it over the toilet, which is the wrong place in uh, my opinion. And in actual practice, that's the wrong place. Uh, as we move up, we can see that we've got a master suite with a powder for her, a powder for him. So you can go to the bathroom at the same time, each of which has a bath fan. And there's no bath fan anywhere in the shower or around the shower. So again, I think that that's kind of a mistake. Uh, just because it's Las Vegas and it's dry doesn't mean that you should allow the humidity to spike terribly for like an hour a day and then go back to normal. I think that that's, that's um, not great. Now here, one of the things that's interesting as far as the enclosure goes is that we've got all these glass, this west-facing wall at this bedroom, which is beautiful, but major heat gain in the 5 o'clock hour in the summertime. Uh, they have a powered drapery and curtain track on the inside. That's very nice, um, but if you consider that once the heat of the sun's rays have come through the window and they hit the backside of those drapes, the heat is in the house, and now you have to deal with it. Better would have been to have powered, if you're going to have a powered something, put powered shutters outside, then the heat is not making it inside the house. And that would be, that'd be cool. We don't have to worry about that right now because we're going to move on to ventilation. Now, here's what I want to say about the air tightness. We have a total condition floor area of just the house, not the casita, 72, 73. We've got mostly 12 foot ceiling heights. That's like the, the roof, I believe. And we've got a few, uh, like about a quarter of the house is 16 foot ceiling heights. So that's a total approximate volume, which I've just, you know, calculated here of about 95,000 cubic feet. For a blower door test that would give you 0.35 ACH 50, that's a CFM 50 of the blower door uh, reading itself of 552 CFM. That means that if we blow 552 CFM of air with any devices out of this house, we are doing a blower door test. Now let's look at what they have installed in here. All those bath fans, they, they weren't extract points for the ERV. They're actual honest to God bath fans. They have seven 110 CFM bath fans, they have 480 CFM bath fans. They've got two in the garage, which we're not counting for this. Like what I'm worried about right now is depressurization of the house. Exhausting out of the garage is fine. Um, that's good. That's the only way to make sure that the garage is depressurized with relationship to the house so that you don't have infiltration uh, the other way. We also have four 150 CFM ERVs. That's 600 CFM. Now I'm going to assume that one of these 110 CFM bath fans and one of these 150 CFM ERVs is for the Casita. So we're gonna subtract that when we talk about this in a minute. They also picked these concentric ERV terminations and the controllers. And I wanna show you this stuff real quick. So first of all, this is the bath fans that are the 110. They've got this little blue light in them. As far as I understand, these are like not nearly as dangerous as actual UV lights. And so um, does it do a great job of killing things? Probably not. Is it going to be super dangerous for your family? Probably not. I would say it's like, it looks a little bit like window dressing to me. Uh, no offense, Brone. Bath fans, yay. Bath fans. Energy Star, great. Pick Energy Star anytime you can. Now, as far as the uh, ERVs go, this is the um, 150 CFM ERV. This is what makes these ERVs special. This is why everybody's talking about these Brone AI series, is because this box tests itself. 
not just when you set it up, but also twice per second ongoing and make sure that it does exactly what you tell it to. That's cool. These are the concentric vents. Now, these are like worst case scenario, in my opinion. Normally, you'd wanna have the intake and the exhaust at least 10 feet away from each other because the air is just not coming out of this that fast. So is there a chance for feedback? Yes, there is. And in fact, I believe that they allow them to feedback 10%. Um, in test conditions, which is like involves no wind, I'm sure, or anything like that. So I had a manufacturer of a system that does this and only does this. You can't like set it up a different way. Say, oh, well, Brone does it and Panasonic do it. And it's like, okay, but they only do it when like you can't do anything else. So I, I think that this is could be done better. Uh, here's the controller that they picked. And they've got four of these. Uh, I like that it's full color. You can see all the stuff of like what is going on with the ventilation system. I will say that this is interesting. The fact that they screenshot on the research mode. This is something that Brown ERVs and a few other ERVs can do, which is actually against code in some places. It means that they close off the damper of the uh, outgoing air and they actually have the outgoing air, the stale air turned around and come back into the house. And that's so, I think it's so that you can kind of like build, build some more energy efficiency into it and potentially also defrost the core. And I, I think that there might be some other things in it, but I would just say like in general, in my practice, I'm only recommending ERVs if you're gonna use them as bath exhaust because you can't use bath fans anymore. In which case you would never wanna do this. That would be a total disaster. Now, going back to this ventilation uh, count, the total ventilation possible with all those bath fans that we just added up is 980 CFM of bath exhaust. Plus, remember we had this 650 CFM of a kitchen hood that I don't think got made up. So we could possibly suck on this house with 630 CFM combined uh, of depressurization. And that means that for this blower door test, we would be doing 252 pascals of depressurization. That's five blower doors. That's also called one inch of water column. That is a huge number. And I think that that is super dangerous to build that amount of capacity into a, a home because you don't know what people are going to do. People are sometimes crazy or weird. Uh, now, as far as the correct amount of ventilation, you do the ventilation calculation. And what they've got built in here is 450 CFM if we count one of those ERVs for the Casita. We got 450 CFM of balanced ventilation also on top of the bath exhaust. And when you do your calculation here, you find out that the, or I am finding out that the house needs 255 CFM continuous, but it's getting 21 for free from infiltration. So we really only need 235 CFM continuous every minute of every day. We have 450 built in, which means we basically can do a 100% additional boost mode. I think that's a mistake. I think that considering that this house is so big, um, thinking about the first 50,000 cubic feet of air, which would be basically like, you know, that's a pretty big home already, as one tier of air that needs to be replaced, and then thinking about the second 50,000 cubic feet of air as simply cream on top. It's a buffer. If you have pollutants building up in your house, that extra 50,000 cubic feet of air is gonna kind of absorb that, and then, like, you don't have to worry about it for a couple of hours. So I think that that giving a house this big a 100% boost capacity is a mistake. I wouldn't even give it a 50% boost capacity. I would give this house a 30% boost capacity. So I'd, I'd give it from 235, I'd add 30%. I'd come up with like 300 CFM total. So you'd only need two of those three ERVs. <laughs>